I was not with you any step of the way, Jerusalem. Fuck you. How's it going, everybody? I am the Crispy Critic, and today we are going to be reviewing another zombie movie. Now, reviewing two zombie movies in a row does feel excessive, I understand that, but this one, called Jerusalem, that I see they replaced the S with a Z because there are zombies in it, is another in a long line of Israeli genre movies that have been coming out in the past few years. So, considering that Jerusalem has gotten a moderate amount of buzz, I figured, why not watch it? Why not watch it? Well, because it's terrible. It's fucking off. It's so bad. It's so bad. Even the good parts of the movie, however few they are, end up being shit because the bad parts are so bad. The little good that's in the movie actually serves to emphasize the bad. So when anything good happens in the movie, it just makes you realize how everything around it is shit. Jerusalem is a found footage zombie apocalyptic horror. The movie starts in 1972 where these two priests are in Jerusalem filming an exorcism. The woman who the exorcism is centered around, the possession victim, is killed pretty quickly and we fast forward 30-40 years to uh, two Americans, Sarah and Rachel, who are planning on taking a trip to Tel Aviv. On the plane there, they meet an archaeology student named Kevin who starts spouting some real, some real deep shit about Judgment Day. And they think it's fine. So Kevin tells them about all the various incarnations of Judgment Day and how it works and how uh, one of the gates of hell is supposed to be in Jerusalem. And when they get to Jerusalem, it's not long before they are caught, surprise, surprise, caught right in the middle of Judgment Day. Let's start with the worst part of the movie, the characters. I use that term loosely, characters. They aren't characters so much as they are ideologues. There's this really unsettling thematic trend in Jerusalem to paint Palestinians and Muslims as suave, suspicious, a little bit devilish. In fact, it's so evident that it feels at points like propaganda. Now, I'm not going to go as far to say that it is propaganda, but kind of propaganda. That being said, the movie doesn't treat its two central Jewish characters any better, but I, I think it's probably more about them being women. What is worth exploring is the setting. When the movie starts delving into the culture of Jerusalem and when the character Omar begins telling Sarah and Rachel about Jerusalem and how it's set up, it becomes clear just how shitty the movie really is. And not because those parts in themselves are bad, it's because those parts are good and everything around them is awful. These early moments or history lessons about the city of Jerusalem end up being the most interesting part of the movie. And once they're gone, there is not much to latch on to at all. Sarah and Rachel are just fucking boring. Sarah is, is your typical, like, kinda uptight, more shy kinda girl who doesn't want to take too many risks ever. So her arc is just easy as fuck. She doesn't want to do shit, and then she does want to do shit. Rachel is the polar opposite of her best friend. She's not uptight, she's very free, she cheats on her boyfriend all the time. I'm not like other girls, one of those weirdly veiled sexist kind of bullshit things. So Jerusalem, as a city, has more character than the characters themselves. I really gotta give credit where credit's due. Directors Doron and Yoav Paz really do a good job of exploring their setting and integrating it into the story, especially early on. But the thing about a movie and the thing especially about a good movie is that any aspect of that movie should raise every other aspect and make them look good and, and connect and make sense. Jerusalem does not do that. In fact, it never does that. The best parts emphasize the worst and the worst emphasize how bad it all really is. And the saddest thing, the saddest thing is that the best part of the movie, the setting, falls prey to that exact same thing. It's not long before it becomes just another fucking post-apocalyptic landscape. Spoiler alert, there are giants in the movie. Sarah has finally gotten Kevin out of this place that he's in, and they're walking on the street, and they and the ground starts to shake. But then she turns around, and there's a big motherfucker, I mean like huge, he's just, he's probably at least 50 stories tall, and he's a fucking, he's a demon straight out of Dante's Inferno. She films it going like, Oh my god! Oh my god! Like Troll 2 line delivery status. It's fucking bullshit, dude. They're straight giants on the earth, and you're not worried at all. If you aren't scared of a giant demon straight walking at least 20 feet away from you through one of the oldest 
cities on Earth. Why the fuck should I care at all about anything else that happens in that? Because that's the biggest thing that's in the movie. And she didn't give a fuck, so I don't give a fuck. Look, when it comes down to it, Jerusalem is just... It's not worth watching. I don't, I don't say that often. I usually try to find something redeeming about the movies that makes them worth watching. What is redeeming about it ends up showing what's not redeeming about it. There are multiple places where the movie really could have worked. One of the final shots of the movie is very, very evocative and gave me chills when I saw it. But that came at the end of the movie. You should have given me chills in the beginning so I was with you through the whole thing. But I was not with you. So I give Jerusalem a 1 out of 5. It's fucking terrible. Rampant with cliches and infused with this, this weird cultural propaganda, a trip to Jerusalem is a waste of your time. Well, thank you everybody for watching. I am the Crispy Critic, and tomorrow was indeed better. And I'll see you guys next week.